Josh Hewitt from Top Form Fitness. Once again, it's time to do it with Hewitt. In today's video, I'm going to start a series of videos directed at rehabilitation or corrective exercises that you can use for preventing injury and also rehabilitating yourself if you have injuries in common areas such as your shoulders, lower back, and knees. So today we're going to focus on knees and I have with me a friend and a client of mine, Adam Slatteroff who had an ACL reconstruction and after a couple of years of seeing physiotherapists, doctors, and other trainers, uh, was not able to get strength and stability and range of motion back in his knee. Uh, and his goal was to uh, compete in strength athletics, powerlifting and strongman competition. So obviously, over and above what the doctors are recommending, what was the first feedback you got when you went to see like fit, uh, doctors and medical professionals? You're good. Yeah. Basically, you can walk. That's good, but that wasn't my goal. My goal was to get back the strengths of the head and keep getting stronger. Exactly. And I also uh, went through uh, ACL reconstruction myself and the same thing. This is now my stronger leg post-surgery. So we're going to start from the bottom and that is immediately post-injury. Now this video is also directed for anyone with knee issues. A lot of these exercises have a carryover for any common knee issues, knee complaints, not just ACL surgery. Okay, first things first, if you have an acute injury, you've just hurt yourself, what is probably immediately recommended is to see a medical professional or a doctor. Make sure there's nothing torn or broken, and if there is, you have to address that, obviously, first. In which case, probably after you've had uh, surgery or a necessary treatment uh, from a medical professional, ice and rest is indicated. But after you've undergone uh, rest and ice, inflammation is starting to, to come down, then you want to look at active range of motion exercises. Now for the knee, this would simply mean just moving your leg through whatever active range of motion you can achieve. So if you can't quite achieve terminal knee extension, then you just come to wherever you can and hold. If you can't quite achieve full knee flexion, then that, you just come as far as you can. And then you gradually work on range of motion at the knee joint as well as abduction, adduction, and hip flexion extension. From there, you're going to look at some isometric exercises. So you've achieved a greater active range of motion. Now we want to apply a little bit of static resistance. Okay, so in this case, it would be isometric exercises that engage your quadriceps, your glutes, and your hamstrings, as well as lower leg stuff. So for an example, <clears throat> if you wanted to engage the glute med, which is definitely necessary in helping you achieve strength and stability around the, the knee, then you'd want to do a, an abduction exercise where you press out lightly against a door frame or a wall and hold for 10 seconds, engaging the hip, pressing out laterally without letting your body tilt sideways and maintain that contraction for 10 to 15 seconds. Now, even though you have the injury on one side, you can address both sides, just always lead with your, the side that is affected, the weaker side or the injured side. For your quadricep, same basic idea, press the leg straight forward, try to extend the knee as much as you can, and then press forward into the wall or a machine or whatever you're pushing against, trying to engage the quadricep. Again, for about 10 seconds, and relax. For the glutes, a common one, a good one to try out is the glute bridge. <coughs> pressing your heels down into the floor, pressing your hips up, so you're getting that hip extension, squeezing the glutes. If you feel strong and stable enough, progress to doing that with one leg, contracting the weak glute, and then you can also follow through with the other side to maintain balance. But you want to get that glute fire firing. Glute strength and stability is huge when it comes to maintaining strength and stability around the knee. If you have weak glutes, more than likely you're going to be putting excess stress around the knee. So some other basic isometric exercises you can use to achieve strength and stability around your legs, uh, your quads, your hips, your hamstrings, your glutes, are uh, plank variations. Now, starting off with a side plank, if this is the affected knee, coming up into a side plank position, trying to engage your core, and then holding that position with your core locked in and elevating the top leg. This will engage that glute med on the bottom here. Now, if you have... The, weak glutes or instability glutes, this is harder than you'd expect. It's actually a pretty challenging exercise. Another one is the plank position, locking in at a regular plank. And then if you can focus on my legs, elevating one leg such that the weight is onto the quadricep on the opposite one. And lock it in there, really engage that quad. And you can repeat on the dominant side afterwards. 
All right, after you've got your isometric exercises, uh, you've progressed through those for a number of uh, weeks as needed, we can move to isolation exercises. So Adam's going to demonstrate uh, with a band. It's just a simple uh, resistance tubing, and you can use heavier gauges of tubing as you get stronger. Around the back of the knee, step back until you have enough tension that you can feel it, but you can still control the movement. One leg beside the other leg, feet lined up. And you're going to lift your heel off the ground so that your knee is bent and then you're going to press your heel down and flex and hard, contract your quadricep hard. Good. So you're trying to engage that VMO, your vastus medialis, the inner quad muscle. Push the heel down, squeeze, and then let it up with control. Good. And you can get a little bit stronger contraction if you have good range of motion by pressing the heel down and lifting the toes up, lifting the ball of the foot. Good. The dorsiflexion. Good. 10 to 15 Press minutes, it down. Right? Yeah, 10 to 15 repetitions, but the main thing is you hold for a couple seconds on each contraction to really get that quad firing and that end range of motion. Because it typically, especially after uh, an ACL injury, it's really hard to get that end range of motion back. And this will help to fire that quad before you get into uh, step ups and lunges, etc. Good job. Now for other isolation work, we want to work the adductors and abductors. So for the adductors, I have here one of those old school Pilates rings. So you're going to put that yeah, between the legs, uh, the pad below the knees. Your feet are lined up straight and even with each other. And you're going to press those in, your knees in until they're over top of your feet. Try not to use your hands to assist. You can guide the range, let it out. Again, bring it in, hold it for a couple seconds. Really feel the inner thigh working and bring it out. Keep going. So again, at least 10 repetitions, holding, holding, and out. Good. And if you have one of those machines at the gym where you can do the adductor and machines where you're pressing your legs in, that'll work fine as well. But just make sure you hold the contraction. Good. Okay, so now we're going to do some abduction. Again, if you have a machine at the gym that does abduction, that's fine. But we're going to use some simple ankle weights here. So we're going to loop this around one leg. Now the main thing with abduction is that you're going to try to maintain a little bit of hip extension as well. Bring that leg back on top. Bend your bottom leg for stability. And then bring that top leg up as straight as you can. Bring it up, hold, and then down with control. Reach your leg back a little bit, so towards your ass. There you go, now straight up. Really, there you go, good. Make it work right into the hip. Now these exercises might see a little, seem a little tedious. Straight up, squeeze it, hold. But if you don't address those weak links, all around the hip, knee, and foot. So you'd again, 10 to 15 repetitions, and then you can repeat on your unaffected side as well. This will give you a good indication of how much uh, deficit there is in strength on your affected leg. Another excellent isolation exercise which targets your hamstrings and glutes is the supine ball hamstring curl. So on this one, you can use a leg curl machine. The thing I like about this is when you lift your hips out them, lift your butt up. Good, now keep your butt up in the air. You're gonna be engaging all of the posterior chain and glutes as well with this exercise and let it legs extend out all the way. Now bring the ass up. Don't let your, your butt touch the ground in between. If you can keep your hips off the ground, even better. Good. A little bit more range of motion. Bring it in a little further. There. And back down. So with Adam, I would recommend even working on a little bit more hip extension. Driving those. There you go. Hips up towards the ceiling. Rest your head down. Bring your hips up. That's better. Okay. Now a progression from this would be to progress to single leg, which is harder than it looks. So one leg in the air and other leg on the ball, hips up just a little bit and bring it down, good. Okay, and that's harder than it looks, exactly. So that would be a progression you'd, you'd work up from that hamstring curl. Now that you've completed the isometric exercises and progressing up towards isolation exercises, it's time to get into the compound movements where you incorporate that weak link back into the chain of compound exercises. But when you start your compound exercises, Start with isolateral or single leg exercises first so that you can target the weaker side initially. So if this were to be my affected leg, I would start with the affected leg and try and match the reps with my strong leg. All right, so a step up, a basic front step up would be a starting point. But you want to make sure that you're loading the, the, the leg that's on top and not bouncing off the back leg. So you notice how I'm touching very lightly, just getting the range of motion I can control and then as I'm able, I progress the range of motion. Down with control, lightly touch, push through, and up. And as you can see from the front, my knee is going to line up right over the foot. And I'm going to try to keep my entire foot planted on the step, not letting my knee deviate through the motion. If you're comfortable with that, then you can also progress up to a side step up. Just using your heel to touch on the ground, knee lined up, 
this prevents you from pushing off that opposite leg and then you drive up through the affected leg with control and then again increase range of motion as you're able. Okay, so from the side as you can see it looks like hips back, knee lined up, lightly touch only the heel, don't push off that leg, just press yourself through with the affected leg. Progressing from there into a split squat. First build up your range of motion, your strength and stability in those step up variations before you move on to split squats. That's going to really isolate that weak side because you're not using other legs to help. And then as you're able, you can add resistance by holding dumbbells or using a barbell as well with that exercise. Then progressing on to a Bulgarian split squat or a split squat and you can start to really load up this exercise a little bit more. So a simple Bulgarian squat, you're going to again focus the load on the front leg. So get the hips back, back flat and come down to at least 90 degrees and then push through the front leg. Another good compound exercise that uh, involves isolateral or single leg movements is a single leg deadlift. So for this exercise, you support your weight on one leg, you can hold uh, dumbbells or progress up towards a loaded barbell, and then slightly unlock the leg that you're working and work on hip movement only, keeping a nice neutral spine, and then flex yourself forward at the hip joint only. Unlock the knee. That hamstring and ass is going to really fire with this exercise. Work on that balance. Keep the knee lined up, body flat, and then pull through, contracting the whole posterior chain. Now that you've done some isolateral work, some single leg work, we can get back into the compound two-legged exercises such as squats and deadlifts. So make sure the bar is centered on your back, and then when you squat, keep your entire foot planted on the floor and sit back with the hips. So it's a good cue to keep weight driving through the heels but you don't want to let your toes lift off the ground. You want to have a, a tripod stance on the feet. Slow control on the way down. So you want to focus on eccentric or negative loading in all of these compound exercises initially to help build up that tendon ligament strength in the joint. Good. Now one thing you want to ensure is that while you're squatting, you're taking a relatively narrow stance or shoulder width stance, not a super wide powerlifting sumo stance squat, initially at least, so that you can build some more balanced strength in the medial and lateral quads. Now if you, as you can see here is that uh, Adam has a band around the knee, so just to help train those knees to track over the feet and not fall in, we're going to have this band around the knee. So a little wider stance. Good, and then sit back with your hips coming back behind you, knees tracking over the feet, and this band will help guide your range of motion, and help your knees track properly over the feet as you squat. So you're pressing out lightly against that band. Good, getting that full range of motion in the squat. Now we move on to the deadlift, the granddaddy of all exercises. So Adam is demonstrating using straps here, um, not because the weight is heavy, but because I want to emphasize uh, the importance of maintaining a, an overhand grip, not a mixed grip when you're first recovering from an injury, because we want to maintain balance. Balance load on each side of the body, and you want to focus more on what's happening with the legs rather than your grip being a limiting factor. Okay, step up to the bar, let's uh, demonstrate a pickup. The deadlift, you want to start with as much of a neutral spine as you can initially. Nice flat back. Good. Bar stays close to the body. <clears throat> the bar is over top of the toes on the initial pickup. And you're pressing through the floor, engaging the glutes at the top. Nice straight finish at the top. Not leaning back, just nice and straight. Great. So if you're dealing with a knee injury, I hope that helps you with the recovery process. And remember that each of these stages that I've demonstrated here can take up to several weeks to progress to the next stage. It all depends on how your strength and stability is progressing, so use your own judgment with that before you jump into the next level of exercises. From active range of motion, isometrics, isolation exercises, and to compound exercises from single leg to double leg. And even once you progress up towards the squats and deadlifts, I recommend you still start your workouts with some good isometric exercises to make sure that you're engaging the muscles all around that knee joint. Another important point I wanted to mention with any lower body injuries is that foot stability has a terrific carryover towards your knee and your hip stability. So what footwear you use and the type of exercises you do with your feet makes a big difference. So shoes that allow a lot of flexibility and range of motion is important to progress towards. And we're doing your squats and deadlifts. Anything that allows you to stay in, uh, in close to the floor, such as just training in socks uh, or bare feet if, you're, if you're, it allows, 
uh, Vibram Five Finger Shoes, Chuck Taylors. I'm going to attach an article down below that will list all of the exercises you can do for strengthening your feet and it talks about the proper footwear you can use when training as well. So check that out. And until next time, stay healthy. As soon as you're fully extended, drive your knee under the tire so it's wedged right up to your hip. And then with an explosive pull of your arms and a push with your hips and leg, pop the tire up as high as you can. Transition your hands as you flip it.